Teacher, may I ask a question? What is on your mind? Last week, I was at the market, and for no reason whatsoever, I was accosted by a rich young man. He made fun of our ways. I have taught you to ignore such attacks. Why is this troubling you? Did he hurt you or threaten you in any way? No, teacher. He did not. I let him speak and make fun of me with his friends and said nothing in return. Eventually, he moved on to persecute someone else, as I think his pleasure in life is in attempting to prove to others that because of his wealth, he is more favored by God and thus, because of this, despite his immense ignorance, he is superior to all others, and that his station in life supersedes our wisdom, knowledge. All are free to think as they choose. Why does this bother you? Teacher, since wisdom is superior to wealth and power, why are such ignorant beings allowed to rule over all others? Since we are wiser than them, shouldn't we be the ones in power? guiding others towards a better life, making them understand the true wisdom of our order. It has not always been thus. Though long forgotten now, there were times when the wise ruled the earth. Those were the days of summer, when the cycles lasted a very, very long time. When even the gods freely visited and even dwelt among us mortals. But now, it is the season of winter. And even though that time is indeed short, it is the turn of the unjust to rule the world, with lies and misdeeds. Yet even so, all power is not granted them either. Do you, yourself, yearn for such power? No, teacher. Never. Not for myself, but to serve others. I am concerned that with such fools in power, the future will become apocalyptic. I see. Come, sit by me. You see this beautiful and wondrous setting sun before us? I do, teacher. Good. We adopted the symbol of the luminous disk, not because we worship the outward form of the sun, as many ignorant fools, with little understanding, like to tell others. No. We did it because this luminous sphere is a constant reminder of the oneness that binds all things. One point in space and time. One single source that lights up the heavens and allows all to live. For you see, young one, in the manifested universe, all is born from one. This oneness is life. Yet, it is also suffering teacher i don't understand why is suffering born from oneness if god is the source that allows one to multiply and manifest into all of the various forms within the universe why is suffering allowed to thrive for is not suffering born of ignorance and is not ignorance the enemy of the wise is not ignorance the bedrock foundation of all that is evil and unjust. Teacher, without ignorance, evil cannot thrive, yet God cannot be evil. Can he? Teacher, I am still confused. Young one, why such confusion? For one to split into multiples, duality must be present. And even encouraged. For duality to manifest and thrive into infinite multiples of itself, there has to be conflict. Competition, if you prefer. For this brings movement to the universe. Many mouths to feed causes the churning of the components to life and death. And, eventually, rebirth. From the very first spark of the universe coming into being, there was chaos and confusion. Eventually, over a very long period of time, and with the, eventual, birth of the gods by the grace of those above them, order and chaos came into balance. Yet chaos remained. For it is a necessary component of life as we know it, to thrive. It has its place. Yet, now, 
you think your place is to take hold of power so as to maintain balance at all costs. In such ways, you wish to be as a mother that seeks to protect her child from all harm. Yet you and I both know that this is impossible. That for life to exist, to evolve through time, on occasion, chaos is to be allowed to upend the balance of things. But not for too long, for chaos is like a raging fire. If allowed to burn for too long, it destroys everything. But wouldn't it be better if only order and balance existed? Wouldn't that be good? At first it may seem a wise choice. Yet in the end, too much balance and order leads to stagnation, and stagnation leads to the equivalent of a living death. Curiosity would be even rarer in such a world. So, we must do nothing. Have no fear, young one. For there are better men assigned to such tasks. Better men. You are not meant for politics. Being who you are, were you to engage in such a path, it would poison your soul. No, young one. Leave this to those righteous ones who still believe that all illusions are more real than the unknown. The battle between good and evil has been going on since time began. And yet, we are still here. Inhabiting an earthly body gives one the chance for a new perspective on God's endless wonders. Yet one can also choose to be a god of sorts. For you see, we are all in a classroom of our own making. Some choose to dedicate their learning to be engineers and help design dams and bridges. Others choose politics to try to better organize society or protect it from those who abuse their power over others. But no matter what societal path one chooses, it is a struggle without end. Never a moment's peace. As an individual, or as part of a group, you may accomplish great things. Wondrous things. Yet nothing that humanity has ever accomplished can compare to time itself. For time makes fools of us all and all of our accomplishments. You may be concerned about fools and their lust for power. Yet you are one of the fortunate few who has been allowed to choose a path of wisdom. We wear these easily recognizable costumes because the people, at times, have need of our wisdom. They need to know we are always there, even if they shun our presence most of the time. For they know we do not choose sides. We do not play their games for power. Because of this, they are like a man. In jail, and in need, of sunshine, and open air. But, when things are good again, the general populace looks away from us. When the future becomes uncertain again, then they flock to us. They are like children. Do not be too angry with them lest you wish to join them again. Yes, teacher. But, as you said, they only come to us to alleviate their fears. As soon as that is done, they return to their old ways again. They are like, hence, during feeding time. Once the food is no more, they walk away. Yes, but they know we are always there for them. Like a mother to her children, we never give up on anyone. For you see, all, eventually, tire of suffering. There comes a time when a being, after countless incarnations, tires of their never-ending thirst. They then begin to yearn for the true waters of life. Just like you. Most people foolishly think that, karma's role, is to instantly punish. But its principal role is to re-educate. To lead, all, suffering souls, back to the source of all life. God. But does this mean we should allow beings bent on doing evil free reign? Of course not. We fight evil on a different level. A more subtle level that requires no physical confrontation to achieve its aim. Are you desiring to fight others, to get your point across? No, teacher. Better, to teach with wisdom than through brute force. Why do you think you are here, by my side, listening to this conversation? And not like that young man who insulted you at the market. Because... Because I'm ready to learn, to unlearn. Nothing, here, lass. 
even our very shell of a body will one day, betray us both. As long as they must incarnate, the wise, aim, for a better birth. The ignorant, however, play the casino, and die in ignorance, hoping that somehow, someway, they will, win the jackpot, when on the other side. Totally, unaware of the possible dangers that await them. Always remember, and find peace in this. That, as long as you remain detached from all outcomes. Chaos, has its place. And, who, better to lead chaos than one who is ignorant, though not always evil. Even though profound ignorance leads one into evil, either way. For, no wise, man ever chooses, such a path. Granted, chaos creates great fear to all those under its influence. Those who have created their very own painted version of life, and hanged it on a wall in the museum of their minds. For to see someone suddenly shake the branch, which you mistook for the foundation stone, upon which your entire understanding rests, can be a very troubling experience. So, since you, seek, elevated understanding, you should, never, seek to confront that young man in the market on his own level. No matter how tempting it may be, seeking power, on any level, even with good intentions, can be the eventual death of true wisdom. For power goes hand in hand with control. And all who are ignorant, yearn, for control. And yearning for power leads one, away from godly principles. Why do they seek power with such passion? Is being wealthy and rich not enough? It is simple. They have forgotten, God. Yet, in many smaller ways, they think themselves gods. They delude themselves into thinking God is speaking through them so as to mask not only their fear and ignorance, but all of the prejudices born from it. No, young one. If you wish to remain among us, know that we do not seek any form of power, safe over ourselves. For we understand that this universe, this body we inhabit, was never meant to be our permanent home. All that we enjoy here is on loan from the Almighty. And as God is the landlord, God may choose to suddenly raise the rent. To make our lives easy one day, and difficult the next. But like I said, not just to punish us, but to remind us all that all paths must eventually lead back to the source. For without this, essential, understanding, only more suffering ensues. For you see, young one, nothing here lasts. One moment it is, light. And now, it is, night. No matter how hard one tries, chaos and order dance hand in hand and take turn leading the world. The universe. Today it is peaceful here. Tomorrow it may be war. In the summer, the weather is perfect, yet mosquitoes ruin the night for all other living creatures. In the winter, no mosquitoes, yet the cold prevents everyone from enjoying the peace and quiet for too long. Always, on the move, seeking for a better life. Sometimes, this means conflict with others. Those led by their stomachs are solely bound by animal instincts. They may pretend to have, wisdom. But in truth, their wisdom is but the callousness of an, intellect, sharpened and guided by fear. For all that they do, even their good intentions, is in the end only meant to bring satisfaction to, only, themselves. Not others. Yet, the universe records, all, that we do when we are here. For the scales must, always, be balanced in the end no matter how long it takes for the lesson to be learned. Karma. Yes. You see, to all others, it may appear as if we worship the sun. But to us, we solely see action as a reminder of the one point through which we can enter into God's true world. A reality where time itself, as we perceive it, ceases. For without time, there can be no evil or concept of good, no cycles. No gods. Now, without time and God, there is but the void. All individuality is lost, 
as you become one with everything. Very few choose this path, even though it is the supreme path. But if you choose the absence of time, yet with God, the individual spark that remains, is magnified into God consciousness. You may adopt multiple bodies and enjoy the Lord's many gardens of delight for all eternity. Though most have perverted this vision into one of self-gratification, the majority aspire to this realization of God. For whichever path one chooses, there is no more suffering and only peace. But until the day, there are many temptations along the way. Yes. Even to the gods, temptation exists. For the universe is a wondrous playground with many beautiful things, and many dangers as well. I understand that I know nothing. Ha, 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 ha. Now you are truly entering the path of wisdom.